I'm Colleen Jones, and I'm the author of Clout, the Art and Science of Influential Web Content, and I'm the principal of Content Science, and in general, I'm a huge advocate for content strategy. Well, my career has been varied. Um, I've worked with everyone from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, where I was a web team leader for three years, to Singular Wireless, which is now AT&T, uh, where I worked for about two and a half years on all kinds of digital touch points, from web to kiosk to IVR. And uh, I really appreciate that varied experience now more than ever, and that's actually partly why I started Content Science, where we work uh, with organizations like CDC, government agencies, health, organizations. We also work with big Fortune 500 companies like AT&T and Intercontinental Hotels Group and even startups. And uh, that variety has really uh, helped me understand the value of content and really all aspects of the digital to lots of different situations and forced me to get up to speed quickly and my team to get up to speed quickly on the value of content to those situations. One difference is really the purpose. Um, content marketing obviously is very specifically for marketing. Content strategy can be for media properties. Content strategy can be for an organization like Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, which has lots of valuable, useful information that people need uh, to get a hold of. And content strategy you know, really can span beyond marketing. Um, content marketing, I think, in practice, has become very associated with sales lead generation. Obviously, that's very, very important. And I'm a big advocate for it, and we've done plenty of projects that focus on sales lead generation. But content strategy goes way beyond that. How does content uh, become a product? I mean, for media properties, that's absolutely critical, thinking about the value of content as a product asset. So that's just kind of scratching the surface of the difference between content strategy and content marketing. It really comes down to the purpose or the goal. In the next three to five years, I think content strategy is going to develop specializations because Content strategy does apply to so many different kinds of digital touch points, so many different situations. I mean, every organization today is a publisher of content. They have to use content to uh, you know, manage the customer life cycle, to um, you know, not just acquire new customers, but keep the customers that they have, or help customers with their accounts. Um, or in the case of other kinds of organizations like CDC, um, you know, content is an opportunity to uh, develop new information products. Or to nonprofits, content is a way to develop new information products. And we also are facing, over the next three to five years, continued uh, fragmentation. So right now, People are using mobile, all kinds of mobile devices more and more. Um, all kinds of things, for lack of a better word, are becoming digital touch points. Your refrigerator is becoming a digital touch point. Your car is becoming a digital touch point. And so um, I think the whole architecture side of content strategy, figuring out how to make content adapt to all these different digital touch points is going to become even more important. And, and we're going to encounter new problems. So I think that um, in the past, the field of technical communication, which deals with documentation, product documentation for the most part, has uh, used this sort of adaptive architecture, um, repurposing content in lots of different places um, really well. 
but that they really focused on kind of web and print and now to some extent mobile. Um, it's getting much more complicated than that now. So we've got to, um, I think, advance our our tools and our planning and our thinking in terms of getting content to the right place. Really architecting, planning our content in detail to get it to all of those digital touch points. Well, in terms of marketing, I think that when you're thinking about marketing and you're thinking about content, in 2013, people have got to think beyond sales lead generation. So you've got to invest dollars, not just in advertising, um, and actually I would invest less in online advertising in 2013. Um, and you've got to think about your entire customer life cycle. What are the phases um, of a relationship that customer has with you from inspiring your customers to helping them research a service or product to uh, helping them actually make the purchase or use whatever it is you're offering to rewarding them after the fact and reminding them of who you are and what you offer and maybe providing them with some useful tips or uh, other kinds of content uh, before the next time they interact with you. Thinking through that uh, on a large scale and how content can really help and develop that customer relationship is where I would spend time and money and effort in 2013. So if content is king, then context is queen. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Getting the right content at the right time to the customer. I love uh, personas. I think they are useful for design, they're useful for content. I think that a lot of discussion... Even in B2C or B2B both, you think personas are relevant on for B2B and B2C? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Personas are very useful for nailing down who your core customers or users are. Um, you know, I think in marketing in particular, it's tempting to micro-segment and come up with all these, you know, ways of slicing and dicing who your customers are. And that can be useful in certain situations, but when it comes to planning a large-scale experience, a large site, and then all of the other digital touch points that you might have, um, having those core personas and keeping them updated is a great way to zero in your focus. All right, so what does this particular customer need at this particular, you know, when they're researching hotels or when they're planning a trip? Um, are they more interested in uh, having an adventure or are they more interested in just relaxing and doing absolutely nothing? You know, having those kinds of things in mind and being able to reference them when you're in the throes of uh, planning content in detail or planning design in detail really helps everyone stay on course. So you like personas? <laughs> I like personas. Now, I will say that I think personas have really, the discussion about them have has really, um, really been from a design perspective. Right. I agree with and that. I see lots of opportunity to Extend fill in that. gaps. <laughs> yep. Um, to really kind of fill in the content needs or the information needs. And something I like to do is think about what decisions are these personas making. That's really where content comes into play. You know, how do you move uh, someone in their mindset from I'm thinking about maybe taking a trip to. I want to go to um, the Caribbean 
or I want to go to Asia. And then how do you shift them even further to, I want this kind of hotel, or um, I really want to go at this certain time of the year. How do you support the decisions that they're making? And um, really kind of carry that on through to how do you kind of influence them or help them decide on the best hotel, the best property, what would be the best fit for what they're trying to accomplish with their vacation or their business trip or what have you. Um, thinking about those decisions is where content planning can, I guess, where personas really help content planning.